Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. We're talking about flip-flops here and we had quite a lot of flip-flops and there is still one to go. Because sometimes we got issues, I will explain what the issues are with standard flip-flops and then we need a special design of a flip-flop. And this special design is called Master Slave Flip-Flop. So actually, what is a Master Slave Flip-Flop? Well, it's two flip-flops in one. Yeah. So actually we have one, one flip-flop, let's say this is a JK type flip-flop, then we have here the clock input, we have here the K input, we have here the J input, right? That's it. Yeah. So here clock. We have here J and we have here K. All right. Then the output of those, of this one, this is not going directly out. Yeah. Then we have another, a second flip-flop here. And this second flip-flop is also edge-triggered. Can be of SR type. And we're going in here. Yeah. However, this one is triggered by the falling edge. And we will use the same clock signal as here. Yeah. And we're going out here. And here is the real output of this master-slave combination Q and not Q. And in, we, in here we have an internal state. Yeah? Internal state, I call it Q dash and not Q dash. Hmm? All right. So let's analyze what this thing is doing. Yeah? So we have here J, we have here K. We have here, then uh, I will just write Q dash, okay, and and not Q dash, and here I will just write Q because the other one is simply vice versa, All right? Okay, so let's assume uh, Q dash is zero. This is high, of course, then here we have Q must be zero. Yeah? And let's say, let's already have some J here. Yeah? J. We have J and we have not K. So actually, what will happen first? On rising trigger, we will trigger the first flip-flop. All right. So J is one, K is zero. So we'll trigger a switch to to Q. Zack. All right. This is triggered. Cannot change until the next the next rising trigger. Good. Here, this we have here, and at the falling edge, at the following falling edge. So this is here. Yeah. This state will appear at the output. So, because we first take it into and after, only after a while, so only we change here, we, the output changes here. So, have, we have here rising edge triggered, falling edge triggered. All right. What if K stays on? Let's assume this is our this is our uh, behavior. If K stays on, uh, if J stays on, not K, J of course stays on, this will not change, yeah, because we will simply stay here internally, and also externally, we will stay. 
Nothing changes. And here, suddenly, we have changed. We have changed. Now K is 1. And at this rising trigger, here, we will switch K to not Q. So here, back, this will change. All right. And at this falling trigger, this change will appear at the output. Here we take it in, and at the falling trigger, it will appear at the output. Let's see if we make it like that. Yeah. Then let's have both a while. And then let's both disappear. That what we will analyze this this J and K combination, all right? So here, yeah, nothing is changing. Yeah, so internally we stay at zero. Here we stay at high. Yeah, and here both J and K are are, are high. Yeah, so so this one stays zero. And here, both J and K are high, so we toggle, yeah? and we toggle here, zack, zack, the first one is toggling, yeah? back, first one is toggling, and the second one, here, this is the, the rising trigger, and here we have the falling edge, okay, so whatever is in um, Q dash will be copied to here, right? And here, next rising trigger, toggle again. So we have here, zack, zack, toggling. We're falling trigger. It will appear at the output. What have we got here? Okay, both are one. Both are one. Toggle. Here, it doesn't really matter. Even if we would drop here earlier, yeah, so that actually not J and K are one at this point in time. We have already taken it in. Yeah? We have already taken it in. So we will for sure trigger what is inside. So zack, zack, follow here. And then both are zero. So we will simply stay that way. Zit, zit. All right, so that would be how this looks like. Well, and now there is for sure the question, why? Why? Why do that? Yeah. It have even had even a, a symbol, a own symbol, looking pretty much like a JK flip-flop. Pretty much as this. So we have here. J, K, C, Q, not Q. However, we have here these little things which should indicate the falling edge. All right should indicate the falling edge, that the output is triggered by the falling edge. So, why? Huh? Because simply, sometimes, if you are using the output here, yeah, some, some elements are faster, some elements are slower, yeah, and then you would my, maybe reach a state where you just cycle around, you know? If this input and this input is somewhere used and, and, and this appears prior and, and then this C is already taken into account. Uh, well, we need to have a stable or feedback, for instance. Yeah? So if this appears already when the C is still, this an edge triggered things, it's not that severe, but maybe on level triggered things, this will just, if the feedback 
Also, boah, ja, it's, it's not a yes, it's not a no, it's a maybe. A maybe is not really a logic word, right? What will the output do? Well, maybe it will be one, <laughs> maybe not. No, this is not. We need to have stable things, yeah? And we reach this, yeah, that the outputs will stay stable until the falling edge of the clock. So every element in my circuit has time to process the rising edge of the clock yeah, without being influenced by some Q. Yeah? So if we have maybe another, another uh, flip-flop somewhere, yeah, then maybe one Q is already there and the other one not, and then there's maybe an, a logic end, and this logic end gives a short peak. This can prevent it with this. Right? This can prevent it with this. So this is to keep it stable okay keep the output stable for a little while and then pff, whatever is calculated or whatever logic is inside back display on the output master slave flip-flop okay. so this is working um, yeah. flip-flops <laughs> no more flip-flops yeah. next time we are going to talk about counters uh, asynchronous counters. It's an application with flip-flops, all right? Now we know flip-flops, now we understand flip-flops, and next time we can do use them in an application. And this application is called counter, so we're counting things. How this is working, we'll discuss in the next video. Asynchronous counters. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.